Hello, hello, federal employees. Again, it is so good to spend a little time with you today. A couple weeks ago, I produced some content about some of the differences for special provision federal employees. So basically, firefighters, law enforcement, air traffic controllers, those sort of federal employees, how the rules are different for these types of employees as if you are one of those, you probably know, and it can be very confusing when you're reading things online to differentiate. Okay, we're under the FERS system. This is talking about FERS, but does this apply to me, right? Even for traditional FERS, it can be difficult to make sure we draw the line of, okay, is this talking about me? Is this my system, the rules for me, or is it someone else? And so today, I'm going to dig over some more differences about the special provision FERS how their retirement system is different. The rules are different. And even for a traditional FERS, I think this will be helpful and interesting to know, okay, when I'm reading things online, when I'm researching, when I'm planning for my retirement, to make sure I understand if I'm reading an article, okay, does this apply to me? Or is this talking about the special provisions, right? Knowing the lingo, knowing some of the things to look out for can be huge, huge. So last time, I talked about some of the basic differences between the special provisions and the traditional FERS. If you are not familiar with this, make sure you check it out. It's basically about when you can retire, the amount of years you need, the amount of service you need, and how your pension is calculated. Today, there are three more big, big differences that come into play when you're for special provisions. Okay, so let's jump right in. The One of the biggest differences that I mentioned last time as well is that special provision FERS in general can retire earlier. Generally their jobs are pretty physically demanding, right? Stereotypically. And so they can typically retire earlier with less years of service. And with that comes a really, really nice perk. And that is assuming you retire in the year of or after the year you turn age 50, you can access your TSP without penalties. Now, are you going to have to pay taxes? Yes, that's definitely going to be a thing. If it's in a traditional TSP, that's always going to be a thing. Is it going to be taxable income unless you somehow get that into a Roth somehow, right? <laughs> but um, you can access it as early as 50, assuming you meet all the requirements and you meet all the rules. You can access your TSP, special provision FERS, at age 50. If you're a traditional FERS, the earliest you can is at 55, so it's a five-year difference. So, if you have a TSP, the last thing you want to do is move that over to an IRA when you retire early. Because an IRA, regardless if you're a federal employee or not, you have to wait till 59 and a half to access that money without the penalty. So be careful there when you're making decisions of where to put your money, how to invest it, that it makes sense for you. Okay, so that was the, that was the first one. But number two, one of the big differences for special provisions is... COLAs before age 62. Let me, let me walk you through that. So COLA or cost of living adjustment is what comes into play on your pension. So when you retire, you have a pension, right? But what they do every year because of inflation, price of things come up. And so they give you what they call a COLA or cost of living adjustment. Basically, your pension is going to increase a little bit as well to help you keep up your standard of living in retirement. It's a great perk. And this applies to both traditional and special provision FERS. Okay, it's, it's a great thing. But for traditional FERS, you don't start getting those COLAs typically until age 62. So if you retire, let's say, at your minimum retirement age at 57, let's say, there's going to be five years between 57 and 62 where you do not get a bump every year of COLAs to your pension. So it's going to flatline for five years. And so at 62, it'll then kick in and start moving. Typically, those are one and a half, two and a half percent right in there is the range of you get a bump every year. So over time, it, it is very substantial. So the big difference, however, for special provision FERS is that no matter when you retire, you're going to get this bump in your in your pension, no matter when you retire. Even if you retire, let's say you have 25 years of service, you retire at 45. Well, you're going to get this bump every year up to 62 and beyond, right? That is a huge, huge perk that you have as a special provision first. 
just because you're in that system, right? So count yourself lucky that if you retire early, your pension's not going to just sit there at the same level for all that time. It's going to grow over time with the COLA. So that's number two. Okay, so the big, big difference, number three, is the earnings test on your FERS supplement. So there's a, there's a number of things to go over. First is earnings test. Basically, many people have heard on Social Security, if your earnings are too high over certain limits when you're drawing Social Security, people know that their Social Security benefits are going to be reduced. That's just how it works. If you have, if you have too much earnings, you're going to get less in Social Security. That's how the system is built. What fewer people know is that your FERS supplement or special supplement, there's lots of ways you could say a lot of names for it, that you can get before age 62, if you retire before 62, that applies to both traditional and special provisions, the same thing applies. Basically, you don't get it just indefinitely. If you earn over certain limits, it can be reduced down to zero. That's how it works. But for special provision FERS who retire before their minimum retirement age, before 55 to 57, let's say you retire at 50, well, you're not going to be subject to those earnings tests until you hit your minimum retirement age. So let's say you retire at 50, special provision FERS, you retire at 50, well, let's say your minimum retirement age isn't until 57, well, you have seven years where you could earn as much as you want and you're still going to get that supplement without a reduction at all. Now, once you hit your minimum retirement age, you're going to be subject to those earnings, earnings tests just like every other traditional FERS employee. That's how it works. And from your minimum retirement age till age 62, when it stops, you're going to be subject to those rules. So that is another big, big difference that you want to make sure you understand when running your numbers, knowing how things are going to play out in retirement. So again, I can't make these videos super, super long, super, super detailed because it would take me all day, right? And I got to go help clients. And I think it would overwhelm a lot of my listeners as well. So my goal is to give you some good tidbits, some of the most important things that you need to make decisions. To say, wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know how that plays together. Okay, that is helpful to help me plan my retirement, my benefits, all these good things. So as a quick recap, being a special provisions first comes with great, great benefits. Obviously, there's physical demands that come with the job and... Um, and so you, you deserve it, right? You deserve it. But the best thing you could do is to understand the benefits that you have and the major differences so you don't get confused as you're planning so that you can get the most out of your federal benefit, whether traditional FERS or special provisions. So I hope that was helpful. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you next time.